Oh dear, guys. It is crazy. Crazy times. What a time to be alive. If I can actually park. What is up, guys? How you doing? It is podcast 28. And yeah, I almost lost count. Um, and then I remembered I've actually done the one already this year. Um, so yeah, 2020. And it's officially like 21 days in. And so far, so good. I don't know. Could say good or just completely mental. Um, like the Prince Harry thing is just crazy. Anyway, roll the intro and we're going to talk about a lot of things today about Conor McGregor, uh, TikTok, so much more, and what I've been up to recently. Um, so, yeah, see you in a sec. What is up guys, how are you doing? It's 2020, more than 20 days in and I'm buzzing because on Friday, Saturday, whatever you call it, the weekend, uh, you call it the weekend don't you? Like, okay. What I'm trying to say is, if that made any sense, um, this weekend is my brother's birthday, so we're going to hit the town. Um, a good friend of mine's in London from Italy that I've been saying non-stop. Um, that's the main thing that's coming up soon, and I will be vlogging that. It'll be like my first actual vlog of this year. But anyway, this is a podcast, number 28. I feel feels like I've done more by now. You'd think I would have done more by now. But I'm trying to do it like every other week. Um, but yeah. So 2020 guys. Have you got that new vision? Have you been to Specsavers? Yes it's a terrible joke. And stop making it. It's too late now. Um, and at the weekend. Um, if you didn't. Well. Follow me on Instagram. You probably know. I was at football. Uh, we won and we drew a game. Uh, that was just regionals not nationals. I'll get into it later on anyway. Um, but yeah. Hope you've been having a good year so far, or trying to, or like coping in some way. If you haven't, I'm here to help, I guess. I might make your year worse or better, I don't know. Depending on how you look at it, and depending on what I talk about, actually. Um, but yeah, let's roll on with this podcast. So first, I really want to talk about the Prince Harry and Meghan thing, how they're moving away. Um, like, he doesn't want to be part of like the doesn't want to do the um like all the royal um stuff that you do being part of the royal family i guess he doesn't want to do that they're moving to canada or they've moved to canada um I, i've got a few articles that i found talking about the whole thing um it's a long issue and like it's the main thing that's happened this year so far you know so i'm just going to read a bit of it here so it goes last week harry 35 and former actress megan 38 sparked a crisis in the british monarchy by announcing they wanted to reduce their royal duties and spend more time in North America while also becoming financially independent. Now, financially independent, they're loaded. So it doesn't mean like they're sacrificing anything. You know, they got like she's got loads of money, he's got loads of money, you know, Prince Charles owns a lot of land and Harry and William will inherit a lot of that. Um or probably already have. Um or he's probably given them some, you know. So it's not like he's going to be a homeless guy on the street begging for money one day. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of issues around it, like a lot of racial issues. They're saying like the queen, the queen's a bit racist. Probably is. Like, I mean, I don't want to offend people that are proper like obsessed with the royal family, but I'm not. Um, I'll get that straight. Um, and it's kind of that sort of thing. Uh, nobody knows really what went on. Whether they were happy that he married Meghan or not, I'm happy for them. Marry who you want, you know. But it's a royal family and they're a bit weird. They're not normal. They're not normal. a normal family accepting of everyone, are they? Um, anyone who thinks they're, like, they're chosen by God to be a king or a queen, like, come on. Like, it's 2020. We're still living in the 16th century here. Or whatever century they're living in. Because it's not modern... 2020 they're living in do you know what I mean 
Um, obviously, I want to stay neutral, but think about it from the Queen's point of view. Like, um, Harry finally got married, you know? He was the bad boy, he was the one always getting in trouble, and he settled down. He's got a kid to show for it as well. So, from that point of view, yeah, but may- maybe Megan just said, Harry, look, you're listening to me. I'm in charge of doing what I say. Uh, you never know. Um, but royal family, like, some people just look at it and think, that's pointless. Like, people in other countries, I guess, that maybe don't have royal families, they're like, what's the point? Like, what makes them so special? Just so, some rich woman in a big house. Like, how many bedrooms has Buckingham Palace got? There's people living on the street. Just just saying. Just saying. I've got nothing against what well, I have, but I, you know, I'm not going to, like, protest against the royal family or anything. But it is a bit mental. It's a bit weird. And they're being, you know, they're going to be like the Kardashians, I guess. Watch, like, three years from now. They'll have a TV show and everything. And ten years from now, God knows what we'll be saying about this stupid thing that people are moaning about. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you're part of the royal family, you've got to take the responsibility and do your job, you know, and use the money you get to help others. He's probably st- They're probably still going to do that, if not more. But if you had more money, couldn't you help more people? I don't know how much less money he's going to have by not doing his royal duties. I, I, I don't know. But I think it's like 300 days a year of stuff they have to do. I mean, Prince Philip don't do it anymore because he, well, he might run someone over in his Land Rover, but... He doesn't do any public appearances anymore. Any stuff like that. So like, yeah, because he's old. Uh, it's a different situation, but I don't think anyone's done this, what, what Harry's done. Which is why it's just a shock to them. And without even consulting them. Because they wouldn't have said yes. I don't know. It's it's not like normal politics. It's like beyond politics. It's, there's different rules they have in all this. That us normal people can't understand, apparently. Um, but people are saying it's irresponsible of Harry to do this. It's disrespectful. And maybe it is in some ways. But it d- doesn't he have the choice? And may- and it, for me, it's like a a humble decision in some ways. Because, well, not actually. Yeah, it's humble in the sense that he doesn't want to be seen as a royal person all the time. But he will be, no matter what. He's still a royal part of the royal family. That's it. He's just not doing the usual rounds by visiting loads of places and whatever that they normally do um so i don't know if it's proper or humble but because he's still gonna have loads of money so what's the difference really he's just not living in england he's moving to canada and all the security the canadian taxpayers money um well it's not well as long as it's not our tax because you know we don't want to pay extra for something that's nothing to do with us you know, it's not our problem. Well, it is because he's from the royal family, but who, like, someone's tax money is going into that security, in that tiny little town, wherever he's in, in, I think, Vancouver? Vancouver Island or something? Somewhere that, I don't know. I don't quite know much about Canada. Only that half of them speak French and half of them speak English. And it's split between the two. I know Quebec is like, the other side and it's French or most of it is but I don't know any more than that so I'm going to read another bit where um, I think it's from the same article Meghan the wife of Prince Harry has gone back to Canada with their son after the couple provoked a rift with Britain's royal family but unexpectedly announcing they would be stepping back from their roles to spend more time in North America Oh my god, my door is ringing. What is this BS? But yeah, personally, I feel like it's not that bad, really. But maybe my, like older people, or my parents in my case, talking to them about it, they uh, they think it's a bit disrespectful, kind of. Um, you know, we've got nothing against... Then being married, I've got nothing against that. You know what I mean? Maybe the Queen has. And maybe she was like, if you marry her, you're not part of this royal family. But I doubt it because she's the one that's annoyed about him leaving. But maybe he thought about it and he thought, like, I, I don't know. Like, 
He's a bit more liberal than Will, isn't he? He thinks for himself. But Megan doesn't get the same love that Kate gets, if you think about it. Um, it's weird. I is it racial? Probably, to some extent. And maybe the fact that she's an actress. I don't know. That Maybe it's like, oh, she's just in it for the money. I mean, she's not in it for the money. Because she's got money, you know? That, like, can't he be a bit normal? Because, like, think about Prince Charles when, well, they, the royal family set it up for him to marry Diana, basically, it was set up. Like, arranged marriage, basically. And, yeah, we all know what happened there. And we've got opinions about who did what there and, like, how that ended. That, but, obviously, I don't want to spark any rumours. But, you know what I mean? Like, there's a theory that the royal family weren't happy with what she was doing after divorcing Charles, you know, so maybe he had that, I don't know if he's thinking about that, it's either that or like, he just wants to be more independent uh, and um, the whole uh, Prince Andrew thing being a, a bit of a nonce that he is a bit of a pedo whatever, whatever the accusations are, I believe he is uh, what, whatever they said he did, I can't, don't know exactly, but he done a few things involving, like, uh, grooming or whatever, I don't know. Anyway, he was a friend of, of, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, and we all know what he really did, because he allegedly killed himself, did he, yeah? Okay, if you want to believe that, fine. Um, but yeah, so, Prince Andrew, um, I mean, you don't want an uncle that's a nonce, do you, hanging around your kid? So they both probably thought, look, this guy's a pedo, let's get out of here. You know, I don't want this uncle of mine hanging around my kid. Not that, like, he ever gets anywhere near the royal family, even though he's part of it. <laughs> he's, like, the one they just push to one side. Yeah, he's a pedo, leave him alone. <laughs> um, but, yeah, don't take any, any of this literally. It's hearsay, it, and I, I'm entitled to my opinion. I'm not saying it's fact, so don't take it as fact. But, you know, there's a few reasons, like, and you probably thought, this family's messed up. It's blimmin' weird. And it is, you know, that much money. Like, come on. Um, financially independent doesn't really mean anything. Because he's not, like, they've got loads of money, so it doesn't make a difference. He's got to make his own money. And I'm sure they'll be fine. There's no problem there. Um, so, yeah, there's another article here i got. Prince Harry and his wife Meghan can expect less intense local media scrutiny than they have faced in Britain should they move to Canada. Experts said on Friday, though international press attention will be impossible to avoid. Yeah, exactly. You can't avoid the press, but yeah, there's a lot of scrutiny here. Like at the time, William and Kate were on holiday and then they're taking pictures of Kate on the balcony, like naked, and then... Everyone's going mad and there's an uproar and there's like... Everyone hates paparazzi if they didn't already. Like, every famous person goes through that, you know. Whatever, whether you're royal or not, or like a singer or an actor. You get paparazzi smashing windows, going mental, you know. And that's what ca caused a lot of the craziness with Diana as well. Back in the day. Um, but yeah, I'm going to read another bit here. So the step back from the royal family is partly driven by intrusive coverage of Meghan and Prince Harry by the British tabloids. Something they would not have to deal with this, at the same degree from Canadian news outlets, according to media experts. There you go. I mean, so it's not like it's going to be less. I mean, it's not like there's not going to be media coverage. Obviously, it's Canada, so it's a bit more calm. Here they go. There's a frenzy everywhere. Everywhere they go. Whatever event they'd be at, there'd be a, like, a media frenzy. And they want to see your kid and all this. Like, Megan didn't want to show the kids straight away. That kind of was a bit weird. She's like, oh, I don't, I don't want to show the media my kid yet. I mean, William was doing it straight away with his kids. Showing them off straight away. Um, it's just a different mentality. Like, would you want to show your kid to the world that early? Like, some people wouldn't. It's a difference of opinion. No matter what, they've got rules, yeah. Real family's got rules, but, like, they're not normal. It's not a normal family, so she should expect that. If you're marrying a prince, 
Oh, and it says, oh, she always wanted to marry a prince. Doesn't every girl want to marry a prince? Or someone with money, in this case? No offence. But that, the idea of marrying a prince, you know. She got that wish. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying she's after money. She's not. She's got enough anyway. But for her career, her own career, it's better off. she's better off in Canada. But they'll, they'll just get like a re- reality TV show. And they'll be like the Kardashians, you know, a few years from now. I think they're going for like the the, the Obama style, like the Obama family style. Like they want to like help charitable causes and stuff, put their their wealth to good use, and they want to go down that route, I guess. But it's difficult to say. I mean, looking at it from the outside, um, I, I think good on them in some ways, but in other ways, like there could have been a more subtle way to do it, a, a better way around it. Unless there was just some beef going on. Um, we all heard that Harry and William don't get on. That might be part of it too. Might have had a bit of a beef. Um, brothers, what can, what can you do? Uh, I know all too well that's normal, but like, come on, you grow up. Like, you're grown men. That can't be that bad. Um, but yeah, Harry was always the rebellious one. Or just free-spirited. Or a bit more liberal. Like, I don't know. His mum certainly was free-spirited, so that runs in the family. But there's, there is an interview that he's done where he's saying about what, like the current situation, that it's not somewhere where he wants to really raise a child in. Um, and I can understand it's a crazy world. And the kid, we don't know how they're going to... Uh, is it Archie? Yeah, we don't know how it's going to, how it's going to affect him, but it might probably affect him in a good way, not being raised by servants in the huge palace you know um but we will see i mean maybe that's why they're doing it for the sake of the kid give give him some sort of normality if that's possible married to a prince and actress because he's still got fame you know like and she's used to a bit of fame i guess well suits it's it's not right show i haven't seen it but i've heard it's quite good but um yeah she was in that and I think some Disney stuff. I don't know. Um, some of you at home probably know exactly what she's been in. And can name it more than I can. But there you go. <laughs> now we'll see what happens. I mean. Uh, time will tell. Time will tell. But that's the main thing that's gone on in 2020. Um, moving on. I want to talk about um, the Joe Rogan podcast. Um, I was watching his podcast with... Robert Dow Jr., a.k.a. Iron Man. And that was interesting because Joe Rogan was like, what if you made the comeback? You know, you could. there's a way they could make a comeback for you in this movie if there was, like, more time travel. In Avengers, you know, you could come back. Or in one of the Marvel movies, anyway. And he's like, no, I, I wouldn't want to... As cool as it would be, he wouldn't want to do it again. He wouldn't want to... Because it would just ruin it. It would just be too much. But then Joe Rogan's like, yeah, but you're so good at being Iron Man. Like, no one else can be Iron Man. You know, there's been three Spider-Mans and all this. And, yeah, there's no way anyone else could really do it in that way. He is Iron Man, you know. Like Robert Dow Jr. You don't see Robert Dow Jr. You see Iron Man. But I think, as an actor, you don't want to be remembered for just one thing. Like, Daniel Radcliffe is Harry Potter. And he can't be remembered for anything else. Maybe he'll do something else. But, no, he will be remembered as that. Actors just, they get remembered by a certain show, and that never leaves them. So maybe that's that's why. Obviously, it's, it, it, it's amazing for his career, isn't it? Like, after he did that, he did, he started with Avengers, and he was in Sherlock Holmes, all these films, you know? So it was one after another, and, that, and he really dominated, like, cinemas. And he made Avengers, really. As many good actors as there were, Without Iron Man, you know, Iron Man, Captain America, the main the main ones, it wouldn't be anything, would it, really? And obviously Iron Man started the whole, like, mo- Marvel movies. So, while he loved it, he, he doesn't really, he wouldn't do it again, as such. Um, and he's now doing Doctor Doolittle, which is a bit different, but um, he wanted to do something completely different. And rightly so, as an actor, you can't just do the same characters all the time. Otherwise, it just defeats the purpose. Like, you got, you know, as an actor, you've got to be able to adapt for different roles. 
that's the art of it, really. Um, and yeah, he, he was saying how amazing it was to be part of that whole thing. Uh, obviously, they made loads of money, you know, especially for his career as well. Like he's one of the one of the top actors now, one of the best paid, I think. Um, there's a few others on that list, but yeah. So Joe Rogan was doing that podcast. That was interesting to see his Robert Downey Jr.'s take on like all this fame and all, all this craziness around Avengers. And obviously Joe Rogan podcast, you can't go wrong there. He's the most honest, um, and he, he gives a fair argument for everything. And the, the thing that Joe Rogan does the best is he gives both sides, like he just gives the gives facts kind of if you know what I mean uh, but from both sides he makes an argument for and against and Robert Dow Jr. was praising it, like the way he does that so well like he's a big fan of his obviously most people that go on his podcast must be huge fans already um, and then of course the uh, UFC fight with McGregor and what's his name Donald Cerrone the cowboy whatever you call him um, 40 seconds that lasted obviously Joe Rogan was talking a lot about that because he uh, does all the post interviews post fight interviews um, so for him that was uh, that, that, that must have been crazy t- to witness that comeback 40 seconds just knocked the guy out that's not well for McGregor back in the day that was normal but we haven't seen him do it for a few years and he lost to Khabib, obviously, and he's been in and out of prison or court, if you like, for certain abusive things he's done or, like, destroying that bus. So he's he's been in trouble and there was that girl saying he got her pregnant and turns out he didn't and all, the, all this craziness surrounding him as well. And now he just overcame it with this win because all the money went to his head. Think about it since the Floyd Mayweather fight. Yeah, he lost that, but he got loads... And loads of cash. Loads of money. Felt fame and wealth and all that. Mixed together. It's not always a good combination. And we've seen that. And we saw like a decline in it, in his like. Well, it, well in the amount of fights he did. And the amount he won. And it, it was a bit of a knob really to be honest. The things he was doing like. Away from the job. And obviously fighting Mayweather. It was like. That was like a, a circus, you know what I mean? Um, that wasn't because he's not a boxer, so obviously Mayweather's gonna win. But it was all the build-up was pretty good. Uh, but I mean, Mayweather was amazed, like how good McGregor was. But then going for, back to this UFC fight, uh, he's back and he won in forty seconds. Uh, he got him with with, with the shoulder as well. Um, yeah, it's a crazy sport, UFC. I'm not a huge fan, but this. Come back from McGregor is just amazing. I haven't seen the fight either, but um, I've heard a lot about it, seen the interviews. And yeah, he's back. Um, for how long? Who knows? Because, I don't know, in terms of age and UFC, if he's 31, yeah, he could do He could do an, a good... Te- no, well, there's some that have done it into their 40s, I think. Or, like, late 30s. So he could do a few more years. I mean, as long as he's winning, it's fine. And obviously he's one of the best. And he still is. He came back and proved that he still is. And so yeah, that's what I've got to say about that really. I just didn't think it would be so quick. Who would have thought? <laughs> uh, I've seen Bellator fights before. And there was one I thought it was literally not even 40 seconds. Uh, Bellator being like the the championship version the watered down version of UFC at like second division basically if UFC's top division it's like below that like you got Formula 1 and you got Formula 2 I don't, I don't know it's that kind of thing and moving on to something so something I've been watching on YouTube more recently is David Dobrik and his vlogs with the vlog squad and I've been addicted literally it's been a week or, or so Um, because I'd always heard about him and then I finally just gave in and started watching his vlogs all of which are like four and a half seconds four and a half minutes like four minutes twenty seconds about that four minutes twenty yeah so that's just 
crazy to comprehend how you can fit so much into four and a bit minutes. I I, I tried it and it didn't. Well, I've got, I've got to practice vlogging that kind of length. Or you can make like a part one or part two. But literally, it's the clickbait as well. The titles he uses just gets you to watch. And maybe the thing in the title is like a few seconds of the video. There'd be like 10 seconds here and then move to somewhere else. 20 seconds here or, or half a minute here. And then it all condenses together into a vlog. And the vlog squad are just crazy. Mixed of other YouTubers and ex-Viners. Well, most of them are ex-Vine. Um, so I already knew a lot of them anyway. Obviously, David's from Vine as well. Um, all YouTubers were Viners back in the day. Uh, even me. <laughs> I was on Vine. And I'll get onto Vine when I talk about TikTok later on. But yeah, all these Viners, they're now YouTubers and now on TikTok as well. But yes, I'm watching these vlogs trying to get ideas too. But they're not creative as such. It's just whatever they do, like the... It'd be like challenges or like crazy stunts or jokes. And a lot of the jokes I reckon are set up with people that aren't quite experienced in that line of work. But with with some of them, they're like, they're comical anyway, they're comedians. So, uh, you know, they probably don't do too many takes. But I reckon it takes a lot. And you see the work he puts in. It's got to be a lot of work to make it into 4 minutes 20. It's probably so much filming they do that's like extra that they don't even use. That they're, like, they're putting like montages. Um, but yeah. I've got into watching. Some of the, the vlog squad. Their own vlogs. Jason, Jason Nash. There's a few others that are really famous. Um, but yeah. And uh, Josh Peck. Formerly of Drake and Josh. <laughs> um, so. It's like a different approach really. Different to Casey Neistat or. Well yeah. More of a. Not, not even like Logan Paul's. Maybe the way Logan Paul used to do them. Kind of similar idea, but... He's different to Logan. He's a different character. Uh, he just pranks and stuff. Um, but yeah, no creative side to it, really. Like there is in uh, Casey's. Um, another friend of theirs as well. All these YouTubers are connected, obviously. You work in the same industry. You're bound to be like part of the same... Events and stuff. And he's got a Tesla, which is... The YouTuber car. If you're a proper YouTuber, you got a Tesla. Well, most do anyway. Um, but yeah, I've been watching a lot of them, and uh, they're proper funny as well. I never laugh so much in a vlog. And I watch other vlogs, and I'm like bored because they're too long. Like ten minutes, I can't watch now. It's reduced my attention span. So would I do the same? Probably, yeah. Definitely under five minutes. Um, but 421 every time. How? <laughs> like it's got to time it to the dot, literally. Like there's probably so many outtakes and bits I don't even use. Like I said, it's probably like hours of footage condensed into like less than five minutes. And my cat is screaming outside. Probably too cold, poor thing. <laughs> so yeah, like I said... Um, on TikTok now and I've made a few TikToks but I'm not that good at them I mean I'm good at like voiceovers and stuff because when I did Vine I used to do them quite a lot so that's not a problem but some of them are just pointless like the dance ones just piss me off half the time it's just people showing off um, or like models showing off so there's, there's nothing that well it's half the TikToks you see aren't even funny like you get the punchline but you don't laugh it's just like okay yeah you can dance fine there's too many people just that think they're actually funny but they're not it's the more simple stuff that I find more funny the the pranks or like the magic tricks or just the proper funny voiceovers but half of them are just pointless and they're not even funny but um yeah I see the I see I see the uh the craze. I see why everyone likes it. Uh, I, I can watch TikToks. For, for a fair bit of time. I, I just go through and just. Look for ideas or ones to copy. Voiceovers especially. Um, you wouldn't get me. Dancing because I'd just be doing donuts. 
driving around, like, it wouldn't work. I might try one, but, um, yeah, everyone's on TikTok. Like, it's, like, where the internet just puts out so much rubbish and quality at the same time. But, yeah, like, who's not a 12-year-old on TikTok? There's so many, like, like, if you're over a certain age, would you really be on TikTok? Am I too old to be on TikTok? Well, nah, you're never too old, really, but, like, there's too many kids on there. And then some of the content is just, like, not for kids, if you like. Um, but, yeah, don't, uh, uh, you know, you're like, okay, yeah, let me get TikTok to see how it is. I probably won't like it. Then I download it, and then every day I'm watching TikToks, saving them and sending them to other people, putting them on the Instagram just because sharing is caring. Nah. But it's probably just annoying now. I send I send so many TikToks on a daily basis to people just to make them laugh. Um, but half the time you don't even get the punchlines. This is something funny or weird. And the US ones get a lot more following and likes. I don't know why. Like there's loads of TikTokers here too. But they don't seem to get the same following. I mean it's a bit like Vine. I mean I used to do Vine, I did so many Vines back in the day when I was seeing all these pros on Vine, like, spending all this money and making money off Vine, and I was just doing it for fun, like, getting ideas from them, but, like, never on the same scale, you know, comedic scale, like, just voiceovers was the main thing, and you can still do that on TikTok, so that's where my, where my, uh, like, area of ex- expertise is, it's all in the face you pull, though, You've got to pull a funny face. Even if the lip sync doesn't work, uh, it will still work as a voiceover. You just got to have the expressions and adapt, like with the different words, change expression, and it works. They can be funny. But yeah, TikTok will ruin your life in a good way. <laughs> I mean, it's good if you want to like make, like put loads of photos together or like get a vi- videos from like your weekend. Like, here's what I did this weekend, and then use TikTok to create, like, a video. For that sort of thing, it's good. Um, I want to use it for Power Chair Football clips, like, video clips and stuff. I used it for, like, um, to, like, summarise my best moments from 2019. and did, like, a little slideshow. So for that sort of stuff, it's good, too. Um, but I wouldn't share that, like, on TikTok. That would be, like, I'd just save it and then share it on Instagram or something. It's good for editing, the way you can edit, but still I don't quite get how you use it. How you do, like, duets and stuff. It seems easy, but, like, I'm still getting around that as well. Um, but there's a lot going on. I'm going to talk about this weekend coming up shortly, but um, the weekend just gone. I was in Hatfield for Parachute Football, only for regionals. Um, as you know, Nationals is, like, the National League, like, the Premier League. Go up to Nottingham to play. But this is just like a regional tournament. So, well, it's re- regional league, uh, South East to be exact. And uh, yeah, we, we smashed it. We we drew 1 1 and then we won the game 1 0. So, yeah, kept a clean sheet as well. A 1 0 victory is always hard. Hard fought, you know. Um, but we deserved what we got. Um, in the first game, it was really close. It was both ways, both ends. Uh, it was good to see a friend of mine back um, after having his back operation. Played against him, so that was fun. Um, he just looks a lot taller. Shout out, Greg. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was good, though, to get a draw and a win. We don't do that that often. I mean, we haven't... I don't know, we haven't had two games where we've played that well. It, well, the first game we didn't play that well, but... Well, two games in a row where we got points. I don't remember the last time we did that because before Christmas at Nationals, we we won the last game, but we lost a fair few before that. Um, you know, you to get a winning streak going. Well, not losing anyway is a start. Um, so that was a great weekend. And moving on to this weekend. So basically, my best friend's in London. She's over from Italy to study here she's looking for a job for now but she will be studying in September 
but just to get used to a different country, you know. It's never easy moving home. And, yeah, obviously she misses home, you know, who wouldn't? When you move away from home, why would you not miss home? It's, it's like, natural. Like, as much as maybe someone goes, oh, I hate living at home with my parents, I want to move out. You move out and then, well, moving out, when you're fro- in the same country, it's fine. But you move to another country, away from all your family, um, you've got a lot of people around you don't necessarily know. Um, but my friend's lucky because she's got us and some other friends that are here. Um, so she's not alone in that sense. And we're like family, so like we're going to meet up and then maybe she won't miss home so much. We'll see. Or maybe she'll miss home more because we might remind her of home. But we'll see. Anyway, this weekend it is my brother's birthday. He's turning 22. Not the big... Well, last year was a big birthday, but... Uh, it's just going to be a weekend of partying. Friday, we're going out and we're meeting my fr- same friend of mine to celebrate his birthday in Camden. Um, I don't know which part, probably Ice War for the World's End because we, we've got other mates that uh, are going down Camden. don't know where exactly they'll be, but they'll be there somewhere. And so it's going to be crazy. Going to get our drink on. Going to vlog that. Can't wait for that. Going to do a David Dobrik style vlog. So stay tuned for that. And do go out and check, go back and check my other podcasts, the last one especially. Maybe not the Christmas one because that wouldn't make sense. But if you want to watch it, by all means. Or one of my gaming videos, I had a lot of them up. GTA Fridays, where I play GTA on a Friday. Just to remind you, just in case you forgot, follow me on Instagram too. Um, I, I don't know why I'm saying this halfway through the video. This is normally what you do at the beginning, but yeah. Who cares, right? So your Friday's going to be lit. Can't wait for that. Just a weekend of celebrating his birthday. And of course, I've got a new style of vlogging to do, so... If if I can do it in 4 minutes 20, I will. Film a vlog for 4 minutes 20. I'll try. <laughs> or under 5 minutes, yeah, that's a deal. Under 5 minutes, we've got a deal. But yeah, my 2020 so far has been... Well, it's not been bad enough to complain about, really. I've been ill half the time, but I'm all right now. Um, I had, like, a cold getting over that. Took another week. It always does. Then I had, like, a stomach bug or whatever. I don't know. Uh, Stomach problem of some kind. Which is not uncommon for me now. Just a slight change of diet. Which has been hard to adapt to, but yeah. Um, If I stick to it, it's fine. Um, So, in that sense, I haven't been... In the best shape this year so far. Like I said in the other one, in my other video, my target for this year was to not get ill, but it's not my fault. So like, it doesn't matter really, does it? It's not like I deliberately got ill. So, but yeah, that's been annoying. But um, it's probably all that eating over Christmas and New Year. Um, but I'm not complaining. I mean, it could be better, it could be worse. <laughs> uh, so I was at the GP for that. That's fine. I'm going to have like a, what's it called, ultrasound to make sure nothing, like, nothing dodgy's going on. And it could be that I'm just lactose intolerant or intolerant to gluten or something. One or the other, something like that. It could be. I highly doubt it because I drink, I drink milk and, or coffee every day. Um, so I doubt I'm allergic to milk or dairy. I hope not because can't be living without dairy. And, you, you know, have you eaten mozzarella? Like, you can't not live, you can't live without cheese. Or mozzarella, well, mozzarella in my case. Um, or, or milk, you can't live without milk, really. Um, but yeah, there's, those, there's like soy milk and all that. But I stick to normal milk from a cow. Like, come on, soy milk. Some of it's not, or, is it soy milk? Almond milk, one of them's not actually good for you. But yeah, hopefully I'm not allergic to anything. We'll see. Um, to just to make sure, innit? Maybe another blood test for anything else. But yeah, I'm all good. It's not like I'm ill. But it hasn't been the best start in that sense. But overall it has. Like, looking back on last year, which was, wasn't... Well, nothing's easy. Like, you're never going to have, like, a year where you can say nothing went bad. Or nothing bad happened. 
or everything went well. Maybe a lot of things did, but something probably didn't. And that's life. So you you can't expect perfect, but I, ex- I don't, know. don't know what to expect this year. Better vision, maybe. Um, 2020, yeah. It's hard to get your head around it, isn't it? Like, three decades ago, I was born... Three? Four? Wait, 90s. So we just come out of a decade, we're in a new decade. That's two decades. The noughties, and like, yeah. Four decades I've been around, basically. That is weird, that is hard to get your head around. Been alive in four decades. And two centuries. 20th and 21st. What an achievement that is. Didn't even do anything. But yeah, 2020. Early days. Early days to say anything. But if I can base anything on last year. Without burping in the middle of a video. If I can base anything on last year. Be that. You're just going to learn from whatever it is. As long as you learn from it, it doesn't matter really. I've got my. Like. Goals for the year. Or New Year's resolutions. Um, but yeah, you've got the standard news resolutions like lose weight and all this or eat healthier all this. Um, but yeah, I'm changing my diet. Oh, I've got to, to stay well, so that's fine. But that wasn't my choosing, so. But yeah, apart from that, everything's good. Um, stay up, stay humble, guys. I don't know how long this podcast has been. It's always the, the average... Like 50 minutes, over over 50 minutes, around an hour or a bit more. Uh, there were times where I'd do like an hour and a half, maybe even two hours, but we'll see. Um, but that is it for now, guys. Thank you for joining me again. I mean, yeah, the Prince Harry thing covered most of this. Um, this weekend is going to be lit. I can't wait for that. Um, there's so much that will be going on this year. It's calm for the moment, but yeah. Just looking forward to this weekend. Thank you guys for watching. I said stay humble. Uh, You will make mistakes. Learn from them. And just be nice. Just treat other people how you want to be treated. Unless they don't deserve it. Then again. You you can treat them how you want in that sense. Um, But you know. Stay humble. Stay kind. Keep doing what you're doing. Just keep killing it. Know that you will make mistakes and you'll learn from them. That's all I can say, guys. Take it easy, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.